Thanks. Um, I'm Cherie Gambley and I work for the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries in Queensland. And um, we have a national project for viruses of, veg of vegetables, which um, this presentation is part of. Um, so today I'm work talking about cucumber green mild, green model mosaic virus. So we all call it CGMMV for obvious reasons. It's too hard to say that name. So it was first detected in Australia in 2014 in melons. Um, and it's just Distribution in Australia is quite limited. It's been contained fairly quickly. Um, and in Queensland, um, it's limited to melon and cucumber crops. Um, the biggest risk for entry to um, a project, uh, the biggest risk of entry to property is through seed. Seed um, is tested through quarantine um, before entry into Australia or, or on arrival in Australia. So you really need to ensure that you purchase seed from your local seed company representative and that it's been certified. There have been some research into disinfestation trials of seed, but it doesn't really work with CGMMV. So it's really important to use certified seed. Um, it has been found in a few other uh, cucurbit crops in pumpkin and Asian cucurbits. Um, that was found in the first project that was led by Lucy Tran Nguyen up in Northern Territory. Uh, and that project really um, provide a lot of basis of the information that we know about CGMMV. Uh, so what does it look like? So uh, this is cucumber. So you're getting leaf modeling and mosaic of the leaf, uh, leaves, which can be yellowed and distorted or blistered. Uh, a distinctive feature in the protected cropping cucumbers is this wilt, which is quite unusual for a virus disease, but it does happen. And if you do see wilted plants in your cucumber crops, Look for the obvious things, the disruption to irrigation or potential fusarium or other diseases. And if you can't find anything obvious, it's really important to send a sample in for testing. Even if you don't see the mosaic symptoms on the leaves, it could be CGMMV. On the cucumber fruit, you're getting spotting and, on, and streaking, but fruit symptoms are not always apparent. Uh, so with the watermelons and the rock melons, um, the there is no, there's not a lot of external fruit symptoms, but internally you can see it looks quite disgusting. Um, the fruit are ir irregular ripened, they're discolored, they're spongy, they just look really terrible. Um, externally you do get a, um, a, sometimes you get a lesion on the, on the, the petioles of the, of the fruit um, and the fruit can be distorted as you can see up here. So what, can you, what does CGMMV get confused with? The most common thing it'll get confused with in Australia will be potyviruses that cause mosaic disease, particularly in the field cucumbers, cucurbits, so melons and zucchinis. Um, so these are caused by potyviruses and they're spread by aphids. Um, in protected cropping cucumbers, there is another virus disease, which is beet pseudo yellows, which is spread by glasshouse whitefly. But the symptoms of beet pseudo yellows more commonly resemble nutrient deficiencies than they do CGMMV. But I will highlight that it's very important um, to get diagnostics done. It's very, very hard to tell these um, viruses apart by symptoms alone in the field, particularly the, the mosaic disease in um, melon crops. So this is just in, uh, showing you some the similarities between CGMMV and beet pseudo yellows. So you can see in CGMMV, you're getting that really strong model mosaic on the leaves, but on the cucumber leaves with beet pseudo yellows, it's more of a blocky general yellowing, which is more nutritional like. Um, you can see over here on the right, um, the mosaic disease caused by those potyviruses has really similar symptoms with the mosaic and the model. This is a pretty severely distorted zucchini leaf, which is caused by potyviruses, but that distortion isn't always apparent and it can look very, very similar to the CGMMV on the left. And melons are the same with leaf symptoms. It looks really similar to CGMMV in the field, uh, the potyviruses do. Um, so for fruit symptoms, as I said, with the CGMMV in the melons, there's not much in the way of external symptoms. There is with the cucumbers, you're getting the blotching and the streaking. Um, for potyviruses, you get you will get some external symptoms. You can get ring spots, you can get blisters and bumps in melons. Squash will show this quite striking um, 
uneven colouring, and zucchinis can be very distorted. The fruit's often bumpy and blistered, and um, and often often with zucchinis you can get this uh, fruit really bad fruit symptoms, but the leaf symptoms won't um, be obvious. So symptoms are really unreliable with virus diseases, and I, I can't stress enough about sending in diagnostic samples to be sure what you've got. So how does CGMMV spread? Well, it's spread around the world in seed. Um, that's pretty well known. Locally, if it is in your crop or you're on your property, the spread will be th through mechanical, so through touch or through irrigation water. Um, and it's interesting that it, it only needs gentle, gentle contact or gentle brushing um, to, to spread the virus. And then that's in fact the more efficient way of doing it. The, the little fine hairs on the back of the cucurbit leaves have very high levels of the virus and it moves very, very quickly between plants. And this can be on equipment, hands, clo uh, clothing. It's very, very stable on surfaces and it is highly contagious. Um, so how do you limit the spread? Um, and this is applicable to all pests and diseases, not just CGMV. And I, I will emphasize the importance for, you know, general management of pests and diseases. So you should always work in your young or your healthy crops before you move into older crops or disease affected crops. Uh, disinfectants are really important for footwear, tools um, and implements. Just recently, uh, within the last couple of months, a new paper has come out on CGMMV disinfectants and they've looked at a number of products um, for all sorts of different types of um, equipment to be disinfected. And they've found that a few are, are, are much better than others. And interestingly, the skim milk didn't rate that highly, which is something that we thought was quite effective against CGMMV. It is still effective against for decontaminating knives, but it has limited use. And it also has some food safety issues, I think. I mean, personally, I wouldn't like to be um, spraying skim milk solutions around in on a hot Queensland day, summer day, for sure. Um, Footbards at greenhouse entrances are really important too with disinfectants. Um, and if you if you do think you have CGMV, CGMMV or you know you, you've had a confirmation diagnostic through, restrict their access and destroy their infected plants where they're found and lock down that area and try and limit the movement in and out. Um, I'll just say that there's quite a few fact sheets about CGMMV um, in melon crops, which Maddie will distribute in the links to in the email, but we haven't got one in veggies yet and we're in the process of, of writing that and I'll incorporate all that information about those disinfectants into that new um, fact sheet. So how can I protect my property? Uh, use certified seed, make sure that you, you're getting it from a local seed company rep. There's been rumours of counterfeit seed coming into Australia that looks authentic and wasn't, so be very careful with your seed supply. Um, crop monitoring, it, this is another general one for crop pests and diseases. Um, make sure you're routinely in, inspecting your crops. Regularly send samples for diagnostics, even if it's something that you think is already here. It's really important to know what you do, what you do have. And our group does a lot of work on disease management, particularly of viruses, and we can provide all sorts of advice about all sorts of, of virus diseases. So please send samples in. For veggies under our current Hort Innovation funded project, the diagnostics are free and you can send them in through Grow Help. Um, if you think you have CGMMV, please send a diagnostic in to find out for sure. Notify by Security Queensland. Um, if you, have, you know, if you have a strong suspicion, you've got it. And also limit the movement into those crops. I, it's highly contagious and you need to shut it down really quick. Um, and contact, contact us for management options if you do um, get a confirmation. We have a lot of information about um, what you can grow and how to minimize risk of transfer and what weeds are gonna be a problem on your, on your property. Um, so future research in um, R&D for CGMMV, we have this national project and we're doing a range of activities under, under that project. And also um, the Northern Territory about a third of the way into a new project looking at bees and beehives um, as a risk for transfer of CGMMV. So, and they're also looking at decontaminating beehives and a whole range of stuff, which is it's a really good project and there'll be really good outcomes from that project. Um, so the take home messages today, use certified seed, uh, monitor, monitor your crops for disease symptoms regardless. Um, it's an it's important thing to do regularly. 
get diagnostics done also regularly so you know what you have and keep in touch with us. You can contact me or you can contact the, anyone in the department. Regional DPI offices, offices are good to go through as well. Thanks. And I'm now going to hand over to Subra.